Welcome to an introduction to QTL analysis software, part two, MapQTL6. MapQTL software was developed for mapping quantitative trait loci. If you haven't already, check out our tutorial on JoinMap, MapQTL's sister software. MapQTL requires linkage maps from a JoinMap locus genotype file to properly identify QTL positions. Before we begin, we will need three specific data files, a .loc genotype data file from JoinMap, a .qua quantitative trait file adapted from Excel, and a .map linkage map file from JoinMap. To use MapQTL, we need to create a new project. A new project file pop-up window will appear. Name your new project to create a MapQTL project's MPQ file. The files you generate for this project will be saved here. We will name our file Tutorial 1. This will create a Tutorial 1 node in the Populations tab. Now, we will load our data files into MapQTL. Select the Populations tab in the sidebar. This is the Load Data button. A Load File pop-up window will appear. Locate your data files from JoinMap and select the Lock or JoinMap Locus Genome type file, or join map locus genotype file. It is characterized with a P icon. Click open. This will load the genotypes of your population into MapQTL. A new window will prompt you to name this file. For simplicity, use the same name you chose for the MapQTL project file. This will create a genotype node nested under the tutorial one node in the populations tab. We will now load trait of interest files into MapQTL. Still working under the Populations tab, hit the Load Data button. A Load File pop-up window will appear. This time, we want to import the QUA or MapQTL quantitative data file. It is characterized with the T icon. The QUA file is not generated from JoinMap. These files are created by changing the extension of an Excel file from .xlsx to .qua. Click Open. This will load the quantitative trait data into MapQTL. A new window will prompt you to name this file. Again, use the same name you chose for the MapQTL projects file. For our data files, this will create a BLUP1 and BLUP2 trait files nested under the Tutorial1 node in the Populations tab. Now, we will import the linkage map file generated by JoinMap. Working under the Maps tab in the sidebar, hit the Load Data button. A load file pop-up window will appear again. We want to import the map or JoinMap map file. It is characterized with a green box icon. This will load our SNP marker linkage maps into MapQTL. A new window will prompt you to name this file. Again, use the same name you chose for MapQTL's projects file. This will create a Tutorial 1 node under the Maps tab. Nodes for each linkage group will be nested under the Tutorial 1 node. MapQTL now has all the information it needs, the genotypes of the population, phenotypic data for our traits of interest, and the linkage groups formed by our molecular markers. Before we begin our analysis, we should check the analysis parameters that MapQTL will use. These are found under the Options drop-down menu in the Analysis option. You can control a variety of parameters within your analysis, but we will use the default MapQTL parameters for today. If you would like to know more about these analysis options, check out the MapQTL manual online. For simplicity, we will examine one trait at a time, starting with our hypothetical trait, BLUP1. In the drop-down analysis menu, select Interval Mapping. Interval Mapping will calculate a QTL likelihood map for each requested position on the genome. MapQTL will determine the likelihood that a segregating QTL is present in the location. We have requested positions at an interval of one centimorgan in the analysis options. The likelihood prediction will be displayed as logarithm of the odds or log score. Under the Maps tab, highlight the Tutorial 1 node by selecting the node and pressing the spacebar. The nested nodes for linkage group 1 and group 2 will be highlighted as well. Highlighted nodes will appear red. Switch over to the Populations tab and select your trait node. A drop-down menu will appear when you hit the spacebar. We want to select Analyze for QTL. Once these nodes have been selected, the Calculate button will appear. MapQTL will perform an interval mapping analysis for our trait block 1. The Sessions tab will appear in the sidebar with a Session 1 IM node. The Tutorial 1 node, a block 1 node, and the two linkage group nodes can be found nested within the Session 1 interval mapping node. The default page of the Session node will be in the Session tab in the upper tab bar. 
This page provides a summary of the interval mapping analysis that was performed. We want to look at the results charts tab. There will be two small tabs on the side of the results charts window. The control tab allows us to control the information included and the appearance of the charts. For this analysis, we want to view both linkage groups with the LOD score on the left y-axis. Select Show Loci from the Options 1 menu to display the marker positions on the x-axis. Now select the Charts tab. We have charts displaying LOD scores for each position in the genome for both linkage groups. Can we identify if these LOD peaks are significant? not without a permutations test to obtain the significant log threshold. Select permutation test from the drop-down analysis menu. Before you hit calculate, let's double check that our linkage group nodes and BLUP1 trait node are still selected in the population tab and mapped, maps tab of the sidebar. Remember the analysis options menu? You can change the number of permutations here. We will stick with a default value of 1000. Now press calculate. It may take some time to load. A Session 2 PT node will appear under the Sessions tab. In the nested nodes, select the genome-wide node for BLUP1. To find the significant log threshold value, select the Results tab in the upper tab bar. We are interested in the relative cumulative count column. These values are equivalent to the confidence values for analysis. A relative cumulative count value of 0.95 corresponds to a p-value of 0.05. The log value associated with 0.95 is 2.3. This is our significant log threshold value for our charts. The null hypothesis of our QTL analysis states that no segregating QTL are present at that location. Log scores that exceed this threshold reject that hypothesis and indicates the segregating QTL is nearby. Let's go back to the results charts tab in session 1 and add this threshold value to our chart. Click on the control tab and enter 2.3 for the horizontal dashed line at the left axis value. Go back to the charts tab and there will be a threshold line. So do we have significant peaks? Yes, we have segregating QTL in both linkage groups. But where in the genome are these QTL? Which of our molecular markers are closest? We need to conduct MQM mapping analysis to get a clearer picture of our QTL location. MQM mapping is MapQTL's version of composite interval mapping and is based on a multi-QTL model. MapQTL uses molecular markers as cofactors in an approximate multi-QTL model. However, MapQTL is limited to using additive and dominance gene actions only. It cannot use gene by environment or gene by gene marker cofactors. Before we can conduct MQM mapping, we need to identify molecular markers to use as cofactors. Select the BLUP1 trait node under Session 1 IM and view the results tab. We need to identify the SNP marker with the greatest LOD value for each peak in the linkage map. Sort the table by LOD value such that the greatest LOD values are at the top of the page. Our peak LOD value on linkage group 1 is 36.19. If we run down the LOD values, SNP17 has the largest value. We will use SNP17 as our cofactor for linkage group 1. We will continue down the table until we find the LOD peak in linkage group 2. This peak is at 9.20 and the same location as SNP46. Therefore, we will use SNP46 as our cofactor for linkage group 2. In this tutorial, we only have one peak per linkage map. If more peaks were observed, we could select additional markers to represent the additional peaks. To set these markers as cofactors, select the Map tab in the upper tab menu. Check the boxes for SNP17 and 46 in the cofactor column. In the drop-down analysis tab, select MQM mapping analysis. Before we hit calculate, let's double check that our linkage group nodes and BLUP1 trait node are still selected in the populations tab and maps tab of the sidebar. Click Calculate and a Session 3 MQM node will appear in the Sessions tab. Select the Results Charts tab in the upper tab menu and view the charts. These charts are different than those previously generated from the interval mapping analysis. The shape of the peaks have changed and the log values have greatly increased. Back under the Controls tab, add the log threshold value calculated from the permutation test. Select Show Load Side from the Options 1 menu and include cofactors under the left y-axis menu. 
Looking at our charts, the green dots under the x-axis re represent our marker cofactors. We want these markers centered under the log peak, like SNP46. This distribution indicates that SNP46 is most likely the closest marker to the QTL on linkage group 2. On linkage group 1, SNP17 is not centered under the peak, and the log scores are skewed. There also appears to be two peaks. Therefore, we have to select a new cofactor for this QTL. Under the results tab for session 3 MQM, sort the log values again. Which marker is closest to the group 1 log peak? This time it's SNP16. Under the map tab, remove SNP17 as a cofactor and select SNP16. Leave SNP46 alone. Rerun the MQM mapping analysis with these cofactors. Make sure your BLEP1 trait and linkage group notes are still selected and then click Calculate. Our new MQM mapping analysis is under Session 4 MQM. Check the results charts again. We still have two peaks together, but the SNP16 is centered between these peaks. We can check the results tab to see if another marker has a greater log score. SNP15 has a greater log score this time. Rerun the MQM analysis with SNP15 as the group 1 cofactor. Check your maps. SNP15 is not centered in this peak. Therefore, SNP16 is closer to the BLUP1 QTL on the linkage group 1 than SNP15 or SNP17. Using these parameters, SNP16 and 46 are the closest to the BLUP1 QTL. There are a variety of other options and parameters, but these are the basic steps to identifying potential QTL using MapQTL. If you would like to learn more about MapQTL, look for the manual and step-by-step MapQTL tutorial online. Thanks for watching.